So you thought you'd get rid of me that easy? Well, I'm over here now. Welcome to video number 13, everybody, and I'm so sorry that Andrew Mice Clay worked his way into this video. And for those of you who he offended, you know, from some of the things he said in my previous video, well, I am sorry about him. I'm doing my best to control him, but again, don't worry, he is officially banned from any future videos. Um, hey, and this is a great time. If you don't mind, you can go subscribe to my channel, and if you please like this video, it means a lot to me and it helps me out quite a bit. Um, before I get into what we're going to do in today's video, what I want to talk about is what we're going to be doing over the next four to six months in my videos, and we're going to start cycling animals. Uh, when I previously started my channel, you know, it was kind of late. I started this channel in June, and by that time, my collection had been cycled. Well, this time, I'm going to be able to take you guys right along with me. I get a lot of emails all the time and messages with people asking me, hey, how do I cycle animals, and how do I introduce animals, and, you know, in addition to light cycling, how do I heat cycle, and how do I food cycle? So the good news is you're going to be able to watch me do it, and hopefully my auctions, I'm going to be able to help you guys out quite a bit. And we're going be doing it with all different species too. Green tree pythons, Amazon basin emeralds, and carpet pythons, conica sandboas, anteresia, a bunch of different females. We have, I think I have about 14 to 16 females that we're going to try this year. So again, the good news is I'm going to be able to take you guys with me every step of the journey, and hopefully I'm going to be able to teach you guys how to cycle your own animals. Hey, so in today's video, the first thing we're going to talk about is shipping. I've been shipping animals for many years, and over the years, I've come up with a few different tips and tricks that have helped make the entire process a little bit less stressful on myself and on the animals. So I want to share some of those tips and tricks with you guys today, and hopefully it's just going to help you when you ship your animals. And the next thing is, I got some new animals in. How much fun is that? I always love getting new animals in, and I can't wait to show them off to you guys. You know, at this point, I'm really not buying much these days. You know, I pretty much have all my projects set. So I'm definitely not looking to add any new projects to my collection. At this point, I'm really looking to take the groups that I have and just, you know, fill in a few holes. That's what she- Stop it and get out. Okay, guys, this is one of two boxes that I'm receiving this week. And you may have noticed I'm in my laundry room. And that's because whenever I get new animals in, I never open them within my snake room. And secondly, is it possible that I already filmed this entire segment earlier and opened up this box, but when I watched it back, I realized the volume on my camera was not working? No, that is not possible at all. So let's open up and let's see what's in here. I will give you guys a hint. It is not a carpondro. Husbandry card, and this animal has a name, Riley is this animal's name, and out of respect to the person who produced it and sent it to me, I'm going to conti continue to call it Riley. I never uh, name my animals, I guess because I've been working with arboreals for so long, and they tend to break your heart, so it's just easier that if I lose an animal, or if I decide to sell an animal, and I, it has a name, it's just tougher to do those two things, but, all right, and there's a zip tie on this bag. Let's just cut that without cutting my finger. All right. Pink pillowcase, despite it being a male. And uh, okay, so this is Riley, guys. He's a 2015 Amazon Basin Emerald, and he's produced by my friend Steve Volk, V O L K. I'll put a link to Amazing Basins in this video and the link to this video. Um, if you don't know Steve, um, Steve has been around for a long time. He is one of the most amazing basin breeders in the entire country, in the entire world. Um, super generous man as well, and I'm um, really happy to have one of his animals in my collection. So he's a 2015 male, and so why did I get him? Because you know what guys, what I really want to do this year is breed my basins. That's something that's really important to me. And I decided I needed some extra male power. Um, for my group, so I decided to uh, reach out to Steve and he had this animal available. So anyway, I'm going to uh, bring him to my office for the next three to four weeks while he quarantines, and I'm going to start uh, cycling him for breeding, you know, earlier next year. So um, that's it. I will see you guys shortly. Hey, so something I wanted to talk about today a little bit is shipping. I'm not going to get into the real basics of shipping, but you know, I always say the best times with reptiles is when you're hatching eggs or you're getting a new animal in. The worst times with reptiles, unfortunately, could be when you get an animal in and it comes in DOA or if you ship an animal and it comes in DOA. So 
what I want to show you today is, you know, like I said, not the basic stuff, maybe some things that little hints and tips and tricks that you guys weren't aware of that maybe can save you a little bit of uh, frustration and maybe help with the safety of the animal. I think the first thing we think about with shipping is the object is to keep the animal in the box for as minimal time as possible. So what do I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, when I ship my animals, I always ship late at night. Most FedEx facilities tend to close by 8 o'clock, so I don't even leave my house till say, 7, 7.30. So I pack the animal in the day as late as po I possibly can. The next thing I want to talk about is as far as where to ship to. I only ship to, ship to FedEx hubs. I don't ship to people's homes. Um, and the reason is that if you ship to a FedEx hub, that means the person's going to have to go pick the animal up, but it will the animal will not sit on the truck all day. And if a UPS driver, or rather a FedEx driver, goes to your house, and they knock on the door, and you're not home, they take the box back on the truck with them, and they drive it around all day with your snake in the box. So again, if when possible, always ship to a FedEx hub. As far as supplies, um, you can get them any of the places you guys know. I use Superior Shipping. There's Dan, Dan and Colette Sutherland. There's a bunch of different places out there. As far as who do I use as a service, I use Reptiles Express. I like them a lot. Um, this is a 12 by 9 by 6 box. Whenever I ship, I poke four holes on each side of the box. This is a little Manaquari Chondro going out tonight. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. That's going to my friend David Brahms. David and I are shipping bloodlines. I'll be getting his Chondro in tomorrow, which I'll show you guys that unboxing of his animal. So when I ship my animals, uh, in this case a baby chondro, I don't use a perch in the container, guys. I use paper towel. Paper towel just gives them a nice cushion in there. It makes them nice and, you know, he's not going to move around a lot. I don't ship baby emeralds or chondros with perches. I just think that it just, people do it all the time and whatever works for you works for you, but I think there's too much room for error there. Specifically, if the animal gets jerked around, it's half on the perch and half crawling around the container. It could get a kink in its tail. It's just jolted really quickly. Maybe I'm being paranoid. I don't know, but um, I just like using paper towel. Another key thing specifically with baby emeralds and chondros is I know it makes sense. You think, hey, the animals need some humidity, right? But never, ever wet the animal. Uh, wet the paper towel, which I've seen people do that. They wet paper towels before they ship the animals just to keep humidity. But if it gets cold at night, it's not only going to be cold, it's going to be cold and wet. So I would under no circumstance ever wet the inside of my... Uh, little holding container here with the baby emerald or chondro or any animal for that matter. Um, the other thing to keep in mind with, with when you're shipping any animal is that do not feed your animals before shipping, okay? I mean, I would try if at all possible. I know sometimes it's a last minute thing. Somebody says, hey, can you ship tomorrow? And we do it. But when possible, never feed your animals prior to shipping. That can only end badly. Um, and also, if possible, hopefully the animal will defecate before you put it in the container to ship because if you take an animal and then it defecates in the container, that translates into moisture and wet. And if the animal gets cold, now it's going to be cold and wet. Um, I understand, guys, sometimes these things are out of control, are control. But if possible, do not feed your animal prior to shipping and hopefully let it defecate prior to it shipping. So when do we ship? Which days of the week do we ship? I ship Mondays through Wednesdays. Wednesday's the latest day I'm going to ship. because if, Because if there's a delay and your animal misses a connecting flight or something gets screwed up, and the animal doesn't get there on the Thursday like it's supposed to, it can at least still get there on the Friday. However, if you ship as late as on a Thursday, the animal gets delayed. That means it's not going to come in that Friday. It's actually going to come in on a Saturday in the weekend. And guess what? FedEx facilities are closed and the person will not be able to get the animal and it's going to sit in a facility all weekend. So I stress to you guys, always ship Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays of every week, never later than Wednesday. As far as insulation, you see in my boxes, you can usually get a half inch insulation on the styrofoam or three quarter inch. I always go three quarter inch. It's a few dollars more and it just keeps the warm temps in and the cooler temps in when need, you know, depending on what you're looking for. So again, I always go with a three quarter inch. I suggest you guys go with that as well. Okay, so as far as packing this box up, I put the animal right dead center in the middle of the box, just on the bottom. And then I take my packing peanuts, more insulation, and this also prevents the animals from moving around. One thing I want to tell you guys about the packing peanuts, okay? I am a, am I a tree hugger? I'm not necessarily a tree hugger. I do love the planet, and I, I try to leave as little carbon footprint as I can. So with that said, these things will be around forever on our planet, so I always recycle them. Uh, in New Jersey here, we have these UPS stores. I'm sure they're all over the place. And if you walk into any UPS store, typically they're, they're, there's a part of the store where they allow you to take, it's all used of these peanuts. So basically it's people who use shipments and they'll leave their peanuts there. 
It's just a give and take system. So the bottom line is I never buy peanuts for shipping. I go and I get them for free. And it's not about paying for them, guys. It's simply about just recycling. So anyway, that's why I use the, anybody thinking out there, hey, why am I using these peanuts? They're so bad for the environment. That's why I use them. They're constantly being recycled. Next, another quick tip I want to give you guys. See these yellow perishable things here? They're available at FedEx for free. Go to your FedEx office and you can ask. They'll give you books and books of them. These are all for free. And obviously they're placed all over the box. Um, and as far as heat packs, this is the key thing. Heat packs should be used when temperatures are anywhere between 40 and 70 degrees, okay? And you can see I mount my heat pack, my heat pack on the top of the styrofoam. It's fastened, it's taped. And never let the heat pack come in direct contact with your animal. That is really important. These things can get up to 115 degrees. So you always want them as far from the animal as you possibly can. So in this situation, the deli cup is on the bottom of the box. There's probably a solid two to three inches of styrofoam peanuts on top of this. And now with the heat pack, it's gonna sit right on top. It's secured, it's not gonna come loose. And uh, this box is gonna probably wind up coming in at about, I tell you, in the, sometime in the mid 70s is where it's gonna come in uh, tomorrow when it gets shipped to Maine. Um, the other thing is when you're shipping guys, always remember when you're talking about temperatures and somebody says to you, you know what, you don't need a heat pack. It's gonna be 76 degrees by me tomorrow. Forget about daytime, te daytime temps. Always concentrate on nighttime temps. For example, today here in New Jersey, it is 72 degrees. I would not need a heat pack for 72 degrees, but when I check the nighttime temps, it's 57 degrees. So that's too cold for a chondro or an emerald, so I am going to use a heat pack, so keep that in mind. Um, but again, always just you got to be careful because they do get really hot. And always remember, more reptiles die from being overheated than from freezer getting really cool, okay? So anyway, I hope some of these tips helped you guys. Um, if you have any questions or comments about shipping, please put them down below in this video and I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. And uh, that's it. Box number two. Anytime you get animals in, especially more than one box in a week, it's, it's an awesome week. This is from my friend David Brahms. If you guys recognize that name, it's because I speak of David all the time. David makes all the purchases for my tubs. And he makes freestanding perches. And a little love note from David. I don't like you like that, David. And um, some genetics paperwork here. And perfectly packed. And this is a beautiful little Manaquari chondro. I'll take this out for you guys. God, that's just a stunning animal. And what's so cool about this is that David, I sold him probably some of his first chondros, I don't know, a long time ago. And like myself, David's big into the Manaquari. So when I just had a couple of clutches this year, I reached out to David and I said, hey David, since we can't get these damn things anymore, um, let's start trading off some bloodlines just to add some diversity to our breeding stock. And uh, so I'm really pumped to get this animal. And just to show you guys, and I'll put the information on the bottom of the screen, but these are all the purchases David makes. Specialty enclosed designers, or is it specialty design enclosures? I never remember. David knows I'm not a big fan of that name because I'm getting old and I don't remember it. But David Brahms, I'll put his information. And again, any size perch you want, any tub, David's the go-to man. So anyway, amazing animal, David. And um, be right back. Hey guys, just a quick update on the Savu Python eggs. I know you guys have been asking me about them on Facebook and Instagram all week. Today is day 60. They both look great. And again, I'll keep you guys posted and hopefully, fingers crossed, they're going to hatch out in the next week. I thought they would have hatched out by now, but they look great. I am not concerned. Hey, the next thing, you know what I've been thinking about a lot? Every once in a while, I have these like fantasies of getting out something outside of boas and pythons, you know, starting up a, a completely different type of species. And the one that always comes to mind for me is my dream animal would, would be a group of like shingleback skinks. So I was going to ask you guys to put in the comments a non-boa or python species of animal, whether it's a turtle or tortoise, a whatever, lizard, frog, whatever it is, I would love to know your dream species outside of boa or pythons you guys would love to work with. So if you can comment down below, that would be great. Lastly, U.S. Art guys, you know what I'm going to say? They do so much for us and ask so little from us. So it is $5 a month for U.S. Art. As always, I'm going to put the contact information for U.S. Art on the bottom of this video. So have a great couple weeks, everybody, and I will see everybody very soon. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?